Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about the first episode of the Arceus The One Called A God special arc. So, let's get to it. The episode begins with a showcase of the world of Pokemon. We are shown that Pokemon live in the sea, they live in the skies, and they live on land as well. The narrator tells us that there are many different kinds of Pokemon that inhabit this world. This is the classic intro that is used to open the movies, the games, and special episodes like this one. So it's fitting that this intro is used here. Also, I love that this segment begins with a sepia tone on it, that makes it look like old footage, which is fitting considering the setting of Pokemon Legends Arceus. The narrator then says that among the many Pokemon that inhabit the world, there is one that stands above the rest, one that is known as a god, Arceus, and that as always, Arceus continues to watch over people and Pokemon alike. This segment ends with a title card that tells us the name of the arc, Arceus, the one called a god. The episode then cuts to Ash and Go who get to Canalave City. They are here to investigate and experience the history and lifestyle of ancient Sinnoh by visiting a festival that is themed after the Hisui region, which is the setting of Pokemon Legends Arceus, though the Hisui region is not actually referred to by name here in the anime. Ash and Go walk around the festival and Go mentions that apparently the Sinnoh of old was recreated for this festival, so everything they see looks the same way it did in the past. Ash says that it feels like they are inside of a movie, and that research like this is a nice change of pace. Now it's worth noting that Ash and Go walk by a stall that is operated by none other than the Magikarp salesman, an absolute classic of a character who we have not seen since the episode The Fires of a Red Hot Reunion, back in the Black and White series. Man, talk about a blast from the past! It's nice to see that he is still in business as always, selling his magic carbs to poor unsuspecting customers that have no clue that they are being scammed. It's funny that they brought him back for such a brief cameo appearance. So Ash and Go keep walking and they soon run into Dawn, who calls out to Ash and Go, who are happy and surprised to see Dawn here. Now I love that Pikachu and Piplup high five each other like the good friends that they are. Dawn says that Ash and Go should have told her that they would be here, that they shouldn't surprise her like this, which reveals that Dawn is here by chance, and it's a coincidence that she ran into Ash and Go. Ash and Go say that they are both surprised as well. I love that Grookey then greets Piplup by doing backflips. Now Dawn is wearing a traditional Hisuian outfit. Go wanders about this outfit and Dawn says looks nice, doesn't it? While showing it off with a spin and a pose. She then reveals that she actually rented the outfit. Now I love that Piplup does the same spin and pose that Dawn did even though he is not wearing anything. But Pikachu and Grookey nonetheless clap and do backflips respectively in response. Ash says that Dawn's outfit looks very cool, so Dawn wonders if Ash and Go want to try on the outfit themselves. Ash says that he absolutely wants to, and Go says that they should take some group pictures. Dawn then leads Ash and Go to the tent where they can rent the outfits. And inside said tent is none other than Cynthia, who is also wearing the same outfit. And she has an awesome new hairstyle that matches the outfit. Cynthia is happy to see Ash and Go, who are also happy to see Cynthia. And Pikachu is also delighted when he sees Cynthia. Previous episodes have shown that Pikachu really likes Cynthia. I am also happy that Cynthia appears in this arc, and it is a nice surprise, since I had no idea that Cynthia would appear in this arc. Though I guess that it was to be expected considering the setting and theme of the arc. So, inside the tent, Don reveals that Cynthia has been helping with the festival a lot. Cynthia then wonders if Ash and Go are here for research. They both say yes, and Cynthia tells them that the museum should prove helpful to them, and that they should take their time when they look around it. Now I love that Pikachu, Piplup, and Grookey press their faces against the glass of one of the exhibits, which is very, very funny. Dawn then tells Cynthia that Ash and Go want to try on the outfits as well, and Cynthia adorably says, leave it to me, while making this cute gesture. Now I want to say here that I really do absolutely love Cynthia's new hairstyle. Not only because it is beautiful, but also because it suits her and it matches the theme of the arc and the outfit that she is wearing. So, Ash and Go try on the outfits and Dawn says that they look good in them. 
Cynthia then opens a nearby curtain so that she can show Ash, Dawn, and go to the museum. And I love that Cynthia does a cute little spin to reach the curtain. And she speaks in such a lovable and energetic tone as well. She is clearly having a good time and it shows in the way that she talks and in the way that she acts. The episode then cuts to Stark Mountain where Saturn, one of the commanders of Team Galactic, and three Team Galactic grunts surround a heat ran. Saturn sends out his Toxicroak, while the grunts send out a Golbat each. The three Golbat use Supersonic on Heatran, who brushes off the attacks. Heatran then uses Stone Edge to easily defeat the Golbat. Toxicroak then uses Dig, which does some real good damage to Heatran, which is to be expected since Heatran has a double weakness to ground. Saturn then uses a Dusk Ball to catch Heatran. It's fitting that he uses a Dusk Ball here, considering that he is inside of a cave. So a Dusk Ball is an excellent choice. Also, it's surprising to see someone catch a legendary Pokemon so easily in the anime. Unless said someone is Go, of course. In which case, it wouldn't be too surprising. So, Saturn contacts Team Galactic HQ to report that he successfully captured Heatran. Mars, another one of the Team Galactic commanders, responds by saying, Roger that, return to base. At the Team Galactic HQ, Mars and Jupiter, the third and final Team Galactic commander, are busy observing the plate that Team Galactic has in their possession. The episode then cuts back to Ash, Cynthia, Dawn, and Go. Dawn notes that Mount Coronet is displayed in the exhibit as well. Cynthia mentions that the harsh wilderness even affected the biology of the native Pokemon. She then points to a portrait that depicts Pasculegion, Weirdeer, and Hisuian Growlithe and Braviary, which are all Pokemon from the Hisui region. Now, I love that Pikachu does an impression of all four of these Pokemon, which is funny. Piblup and Grookey also find it funny. Pikachu honestly reminds me of Courage the Cowardly Dog here, which was one of my favorite shows growing up. And yes, I know that Pikachu has mimicked Pokemon before, but the way he rapid fires through several impressions here is what really reminds me of Courage, who would almost always transform into a bunch of things back to back. Go says that these Pokemon likely are not around anymore, which is a shame, since he would have loved to catch them if they were still around. Because of this comment, Ash wonders how people caught Pokemon back then. Cynthia says that she was waiting for this question, and she shows Ash, Don, and Go three Pokeballs that are made of wood. Ash, Don, and Go take one Pokeball each and they examine them. A close-up of one of these Pokeballs shows that they have a lock of sorts that must be lifted before throwing the Pokeball. Cynthia explains that these are Pokeballs that were used in the past, and that they recreated them using schematics left behind by their ancestors. Ash wonders if these recreations work, and Cynthia says that they do, so Ash, Don, and Go say that they want to try them out. Cynthia says that she knew that they would want to try the Pokeball, so she says that she will guide them to the Pokemon Catching Corner, and she says all of this in the same adorable and energetic tone that she has been using throughout the episode. And she also spins around here like before. Again, Cynthia must really be having fun, and it shows. I guess that this is not too surprising since she loves history, and currently she is pretty much living the history of Sinnoh. In any case, I just really love the way she acts in this episode. She is just so lovable and charming. So, Cynthia leads Ash, Don, and Go to an indoor park filled with Pokemon. Ash says that this place looks like Ceres Park. Go wonders if he can catch the Pokemon that are here, but Cynthia tells him to be patient. She then calls out to specific Pokemon while being adorable, which is now the norm for this episode. The Pokemon that she called out to are Oshawott, Cyndaquil, and Rowlet, who are the starter Pokemon of Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, I love that Piplup is immediately hostile towards Oshawott. I guess that he remembers his rivalry with Ash's Oshawott in the past. I also love that Pikachu greets Cyndaquil and Cyndaquil greets Pikachu back in a way that shocks Pikachu. Cyndaquil then laughs, showing that it is mischievous. Since these three Pokemon are not from the Sinnoh region, Don wonders why they are here. Cynthia says that historical records show that these three Pokemon were brought to the Sinnoh region in ancient times. And she shows an old picture that depicts Cyndaquil, Oshawott, and Rowlet. Cynthia then says that she wanted to study the effect that foreign Pokemon have on the ecosystem of the Sinnoh region. 
So she's having these three Pokemon help her. She then explains that the Pokemon catching experience that she has in mind is catching these three Pokemon. That Ash, Don, and Gull get one Pokeball each, and they have three minutes to catch one of the three Pokemon. If they can catch one within three minutes, then they will get a fabulous prize. Again, I really do love Cynthia's energy and her adorable gestures. Ash says that catching one in under three minutes should be easy, so Gull says that they should make this a race. Dawn agrees, and she says that whoever catches a Pokemon first will get all three prizes. Ash and Gull both accept the challenge. Cynthia then says that, of course, they can have their Pokemon help them as well. She then tells Cyndaquil, Oshawa, and Rowlet to go hide. Dawn mentions that this feels like playing hide and seek. Cynthia then says, alright, Ash, Dawn, and Go, ready, start. Once again, Cynthia is just so cute and charming here. I know that I sound like a broken record at this point, but I just can't drive the point home far enough. Every time Cynthia speaks in this episode, it feels like my heart is melting. So, Ash, Dawn, and Go begin searching for the Pokemon they will catch. Ash and Pikachu hear something in a nearby bush, so they decide to confront it. But it turns out that it's just a cricket tot. Likewise, Go and Grookey also hear something and they stumble upon the wrong Pokemon. A Cherim, in their case, who transforms into sunshine form and it runs away. Cherim crashes into Pikachu and then transforms into overcast form and it runs away. Grookey then shows up in front of Pikachu. It turns out that Grookey was chasing after Cherim. Since Cherim got away, Grookey is sad. And Pikachu is like, don't worry about it, everything is fine. Meanwhile, Ash goes through tall grass while prone. Don cleverly decides to have Piblup use Drill Peck to cut through the tall grass so that nothing can hide in said grass. Eventually, Piblup crashes into Oshawott, hitting poor Oshawott on the head with Drill Peck. Oshawott is sad at first because of the pain, but it soon gets angry, and it gets into a fight with Piblup. Dawn decides to take the opportunity to catch Oshawott, so she tells Piblup to get out of the way, and she throws the Pokeball at Oshawott. It's cool that she actually has to flip the little switch that opens the Pokeball, which is a nice detail. However, Oshawott uses its Scout Chop to smack the Pokeball away. Ash does catch Dawn's Pokeball before it hits the ground, however, not before it bounces on something. And said something is Purolet, who ends up with a huge bump on its head. Ash returns Dawn's Pokeball to her, and Dawn tells Piplup that they will catch Oshawott this time. Piplup and Oshawott then continue to fight. Meanwhile, Ash and Pikachu chase after Rowlet. Go decides to focus on Cyndaquil since Ash and Dawn are focused on the other two Pokemon. Cyndaquil soon jumps out of a bush and it tackles Go. Before Go can even recover, Cyndaquil uses Flamethrower on him. Grookey then goes for the attack and it takes hold of Cyndaquil. At the same time, Pikachu tackles Rowlet and Piplup overpowers Oshawott. Ash, Dawn, and Go then throw their Pokeballs at the same time and they end up catching the three Pokemon at the same time. Now, I love that these Pokeballs shake a lot, they shake wildly, and they also release steam as they shake. Once the Pokemon is captured, the Pokeballs pretty much shoot up a firework to signal that the Pokemon was indeed captured, which is very cool. I just love how steampunk these Pokeballs are. Ash wonders if they really caught the Pokemon, while Dawn notes that the Pokeballs release steam, and Go wonders if this is how all the Pokeballs really worked. Cynthia says that yes, this is the case, and she says, isn't it fascinating? Ash, Don, and Go agree, and they then do the classic I caught a Pokemon pose alongside their Pokemon. Cynthia then tells them to send out the Pokemon that they just caught. Ash thanks the three Pokemon for the experience, and Rollet lands on Ash's head, which brings back memories of Ash's own Rollet. Go pets Cyndaquil and he says that it was an incredible catching experience, but Cyndaquil uses flamethrower on Go once again, and Go wonders why this happened. Cynthia says that this Cyndaquil likes to use flamethrower on those it likes, which reminds me of Ash's Charizard. Piplup and Oshawott hug each other, showing that they are no longer at odds with each other. I guess that Piplup finally got over his dislike of Oshawott's. It's funny that Dawn is confused, and she's like, wait, when did they get so friendly with each other? Cynthia says that since they all managed to catch a Pokemon before the time was up, they all get the fabulous prize. 
Ash is eager to see what the price is, while Go says that the race ended up in a tie. Don adds that this means that they all get the price. Cynthia then reveals the price, which is a book titled A History of Space Time in Seno, which was compiled by Cynthia herself. Go is very happy with the price. He says thank you to Cynthia and he even hugs the book. Ash and Don, however, look at the book like what are we supposed to do with this? The episode then cuts to Team Galactic HQ. Saturn returns to base with Heat Ran in hand, and he is greeted by Mars and Jupiter, who wonder if Saturn caught Heat Ran, which Saturn confirms. I do want to mention here that in Japanese, Mars is voiced by Rie Tanaka, which is one of my favorite voice actresses, and since I did not watch the Diamond and Pearl series in Japanese, I did not know that this was the case, so this was a very nice surprise. Saturn reveals here that the plate that they have is actually a flame plate that has been infused with the power of Arceus, and they all get ready to start experimenting on said plate with Heatran's help. So, Saturn sends out Heatran and he tells Heatran to use its signature move, Magma Storm. Heatran uses Magma Storm to hit the plate, which generates a massive amount of energy. Mars says that they are one step closer to Team Galactic's dream of creating a new world, but Jupiter tells her to calm down because they still need a lot more energy in order to open the space-time gate. Once the surge of energy reaches a critical point, pulses of said energy are released and said pulses can be felt by Pokemon all over the region. The episode then cuts back to Ash, Don, and Go who are leaving the tent that they were in, and as soon as they go outside, Pikachu, Piplup, and Grookey feel the pulses of energy as well, and they tell their trainers that something is wrong in the direction of Mount Coronet. Ash, Don, and Go decide to head to Mount Coronet to investigate. The episode then cuts to Arceus who also feels the disturbance and it calls for the Lake Guardians. Arceus tells them to get help and so the Lake Guardians head out. The episode then cuts back to Team Galactic HQ. Mars confirms that the first phase of the experiment was a success, while Jupiter confirms that they now know how the released energy affects the fabric of space-time. Saturn then says that they are now ready to open the gate to Cyrus, revealing that Team Galactic's plan is to reach their leader, whom we last saw when he vanished into the dimensional portal created by Dialga and Palkia, back in the Diamond and Pearl series. But that's the episode. So overall, this was a great episode and an awesome beginning to what will surely be a great arc. It was really great to see Cynthia and Dawn again. Seeing them again is always a delight. And Cynthia especially stole the show for me not only because her new hairstyle was just beautiful and just gorgeous, but also because of the charming, energetic, and adorable tone, gestures, and personality that she displayed throughout the episode, which stole my heart time and time again. I love that we got so many references to Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is to be expected since this is the point of the arc. But regardless, it was still great to see so many things from Legends Arceus in the anime. It was also great to see Team Galactic again, and it's cool that their plan is to get Cyrus back, since not only does it make sense that they would want to get their leader back, but the last time we saw Team Galactic was when Cyrus disappeared. So the next thing that I would expect the remaining members of Team Galactic to do is to try to get Cyrus back. So it is nice that their storyline is being continued in a logical fashion. It was also fun seeing Ash, Don, and Go catch Roland, Oshawott, and Cyndaquil, respectively, even if they did not get to keep them in the end, which is of course fine in Ash's case since he already caught all three of them in the past. It was also fun to see Ash, Don, Go, and their Pokemon interact with Roland, Oshawott, and Cyndaquil. So yeah, overall this episode was great. I really did enjoy it a lot. Now my only gripe with this episode is that it is shorter than a normal episode, but I guess that this is acceptable since this episode was released alongside the second episode of this arc and on the same week we also got episode 94. So it would be difficult for the team to deliver three full episodes in the same week. But I still did really like the episode despite its shorter duration. But that's the video as always. 
Leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.